I've been using autofocus for most of my filmmaking career. The only times I really used manual focus in the beginning was when I wanted to rack focus on an immobile object or when I wanted to do a push into focus move. But other than that, I was relying on autofocus for all of our shoots and I chose my cameras accordingly. If the camera didn't have a reliable autofocus, the camera wasn't for me. Then over time, I tried to progress and use manual focus more and more as I felt like the autofocus was failing me in a lot of our shoots, especially when working with athletes or any kind of fast-paced action. Then when finally selling our C200 and only shooting on the EOS R for a while, I kinda had to learn the hard way that the autofocus of the EOS R just wasn't good enough and I had to use manual focus for a lot of our shoots. So when I wanted to get some other filmmakers experiences from switching from autofocus to manual focus, I couldn't really find a lot of videos online because I felt like there were only two divisions. The one guys, they only used autofocus for all of their shoots and the other fraction just didn't at all. But I couldn't really find any people who did make the switch from using autofocus only to manual focus. So I decided to make a video about that myself. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixel. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. So after using manual focus on the ears R for the longest time, I felt confident enough to actually purchase a manual focus only camera and that was the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. And it's definitely no secret, I like shooting wide open. I also like a shallow depth of field in a lot of our videos. Of course, it's a little bit overused these days and the full frame look is kind of getting the standard, although you shouldn't really use it for all of your shoots. But still, having this really nice creamy bokeh is something that I missed when shooting on the Blackmagic in the first place because A, it has a smaller sensor than a full frame and I kind of had to stop down to an aperture of 4.0 a lot of the times to get everything in focus. So I kind of wanted to challenge myself to pull focus completely wide open at an aperture of 1.4 to a maximum of 2.0 for an entire shoot and see if I could actually pull focus like that. And that's what I did. The only EF lens we currently have that is really wide open since we sold most of our prime lenses and went to an RF mount, which in hindsight was a pretty dumb idea, but we have the 24 mm 1.4. And as a second lens, I used the 100 mm 2.8 macro, which of course can only shoot at a 2.8 aperture, but at 100 mm focal length, it's actually way harder to pull focus than on a 24 mm wide open. So these were the only two lenses I used for our recent shoot here in Vienna with my girlfriend Belle. And like I said, I challenged myself to only shoot wide open. So the only aperture I used on the 24mm 1.4 was anything between 1.4 and 2.0. And realistically, I think 90% of the shots are at around 1.6 to 1.8. A couple shots I also used the 100mm for and spoiler alert it was actually harder to pull focus on that one than on the 24mm although I did shoot at an aperture of 2.8 exclusively. So my first tip is really obvious but it's definitely the best tip that I can give you and that is practice as much as you can. In the beginning when I got the black magic I just took the camera and I basically just tried to focus on my girlfriend whenever she was just walking around the apartment or if you have pets or children just take your camera and just try to keep them in focus while they're just moving around the apartment. Another cool practice that I found online is when a lot of the guys of the NFL films department try to improve their manual focusing they use tire swings meaning they just tie a tire to a rope and swing it back and forth and just try to keep the swing in focus all of the time back and forth back and forth to be able to react to the movement as fast as possible. And the next thing I found that was really valuable to me was to try and not to overshoot your focus. So when trying to focus on a person's face for example and all of a sudden you just overthrow the focus and you're behind that, that looks really unprofessional and really doesn't give a good look to it. It's way easier on the eye if everything is a little bit out of focus coming from your end of things and then slowly easing into the shot rather than really overthrowing and then trying to come back 
it into focus when you miss the focus by a little bit. Another thing that goes hand in hand with what I said before is make as little movements as needed and try to limit your movement of the focus ring, especially when using still lenses, because still lenses are designed for having a really fast autofocus. So the focus throw on your still lens isn't as big as on a cinema lens and just pulling the focus wheel a little bit really goes a long way. And lastly, here's how I actually do it. And I already talked about this in my video about improving your handheld shots, as well as my Blackmagic Pocket 6K rig video. But if you haven't seen either of those, here is my technique that I actually use to pull focus while shooting handheld. 90% of the times I'm holding the camera with my right hand on the top handle. The other 10% I'm just using the side grip. My left hand is 100% of the times under my lens and therefore I can use my thumb as well as my index finger to pull focus. And since I have the weight of the camera and the lens laying on my palm and I only need really little movements as I'm only using still lenses, I don't really introduce a lot of camera shake into this either because as I already said, you only need really little movement and you don't really have to yank the camera from left to right to pull focus and just a little bit of tiny movement goes a long way here. Yes, of course you can use a follow focus, but for the kind of rig that I'm using, I don't think that's optimal because as I've already said, I have a lot of the weight lying on my left hand in the palm of my hand. And having a follow focus, I would actually have to go away from that and therefore have most of the weight on my right hand. And I feel like this would introduce a lot of camera shake and I wouldn't be as stable as I would be when having two points of contact kind of distributed equally. Equally. But if you do want to see some setups where I will be using a wireless follow focus and even trying to pull focus over a wireless HDMI system, we do have a couple cool videos coming up in the future, so make sure to subscribe. So here's my takeaway of that challenge. Before I was only able to shoot at a wide aperture like 1.4 or 1.6 on the Canon C200 because of its amazing dual pixel autofocus and I was always really afraid of steering away from the Canon C200 because I was missing the autofocus then. But in hindsight, I was really surprised on that shoot and basically all other shoots I did before, how easy it was and how quick my learning curve was when switching from autofocus to manual focus. And even though you might not have taken away too much on the valuable side from my tips and tricks on this video, the one thing you can definitely take away from it is that I want you to encourage to shoot more manually because you have way more control over your focus and most of the time it looks a little bit more organic and you don't really have to rely on the autofocus of your camera. Another really cool thing about it is that it's so liberating because you're not boxed into one or two camera brands that have a reliable autofocus and now you have a lot of vast variety of all kinds of cool cameras that you can use for different kind of projects and like I said, you're not limited to the cameras with autofocus. So yeah, overall I was really surprised on how well I was actually able to pull focus on a moving subject where I couldn't really anticipate their movements at all times. And looking at the footage afterwards, there were hardly any shots where I really missed focus. And like I already said, most of the times I just could make some micro adjustments and I was fine. And it just took a little longer to actually ease into focus. But all of the shots were totally usable. And I would even go as far and say that I could go to a wedding or an event and just shoot manually the entire day. So I hope you liked this video as always and if you did I would really love for you to hit the thumbs up button because it helps this channel grow and if you want to subscribe to our channel even better because there's a lot of content on that subject coming up with all the content that I just teased. So I hope to see you on the next one.